Brian. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman here sitting in for Tom O'Brien. I usually do the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock Tiger Technicians Hour Eastern Time, that is. And my service here is the opening call, my daily newsletter, very thorough news, a newsletter that goes through all these different uh, aspects of commodities, etc. Now what we're looking at is the Dow. When you consider this big move up in the green candle, uh, let me do a couple of things as I'm saying that. I, I've been for about three weeks or so now. Usually on a Tuesday, I'm interviewed by Tom, and I discuss, no, this is not the chart I wanted. I discuss some of the technical aspects in the Chapman Wave methodology. And if you're looking at this chart that I'm showing right now, this is a daily chart. And instead of the price, the bars that you usually see or the candles, I've just got a thick a gray line, and that represents the closing price of the Dow. And what I've been talking about is that when this green 9 EMA is above the 14 period moving average, it can take quite a while, especially if you make an M shaped pattern for it to turn negative and negative will go from green to pink. Well, it went to pink and it's still pink on that sharp move down. And um, there's a divergence now because if you're looking at the Dow, which is now up uh, $3 at 33,628, I'll go to the charts in a moment. If you look at the S&P using just this very simple technique, look, the S&P is still green. It went for a day, it went red or pink, and now it's back to green. So the nine is still commanding the, the weight of evidence of the, of the buying power. That's the way I look at it. Look at the QQQ, it never even turned pink. Um, after that, uh, for one day it did, but while the Dow, uh, late April, early May, uh, and the S&P were down, this held beautifully, and even now it's making an M-shaped pattern in price, but that nine period moving average is still very nice. Look at the IWM, the Russell 2000, down, uh, now it's unchanged. 174.09, that it turned negative and it's been negative and it'll take quite a bit to have to go to 175, well, probably 176.80 to start um, crossing positive again. Otherwise, it remains in a sell mode. Now, let me do a couple of other things. I just wanted to show you what I'm, re what I'm really looking at. No, nope, I don't want to this chart right here. This is what I show my subscribers. In fact, let me show you what I do. Um, every day I have uh, my trader's corner plus the chart of the Dow or whatever stocks or um, uh, instrument we want to be buying or shorting. So this is what I give. This was yesterday's close. Then I just give Dow close down minus five and I give a whole bunch of things that we're looking at. There's a Chapman Wave Roman candle there. We closed nicely above it. That was a big good, that was a really strong sign. Friday, Monday, we made a slightly lower high. So that that's called gray peak A because the MACD and stochastic was still very weak and the line was under the 14. And I, I, I said, uh, let's see, uh, if the Dow today, if the Dow is holding a minus 60s or more after 1.30 p.m., the chances increase for a week close. However, if there is a bounce from this early pre-open selling pressure to flip to positive, that alone will force some short covering, allowing for a much narrower close, maybe even up. Dow's right now minus seven. So uh, within the context of my work, I always try to identify the lowest low bar, count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them sequentially, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But it's that fourth highest peak, B, D, where other things can happen. You can go quickly to an E, and that'll be the same sort of thing. Uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. Let me just show you what we, where we are right now. So the Dow went to this peak E, and it went to a technique that I call chat wave inside track Repellent zone. Look at this green and pink. You see that resistance? Boom! 34,257 in the Dow, and it pulls back, and it takes out the risings like a like a wedge formation. This rising wedge, Chapman Wave inside track support level. Took it out, and now it's trying to break above it. That's going to be the big thing. Can it do it? Look, the MACDs is the daily chart. MACDs weak, stochastics weak. On balance volume is really poor, very weak volume. So price has to lead the technicals in this particular instance. And that would say by Tuesday, if the Dow is not trading the 30, uh, 30, it's at 33,619, it would have to get above this trend line. So 33,900s, if it hasn't gone into that area, that says the sideways choppy pattern that I've been expecting for this particular phase from last week 
um, that could that could be unfolding. And if you look at the weekly chart, see the V-shaped pattern, it's losing momentum to the upside. But the stochastic and MACD and the nine period moving areas are all very positive, yet the price hasn't been able to get that momentum to cross into the 34,300s, 400s. So I'm watching this closely. The monthly finally is trying to attempt to break out of the resistance. Okay, now we'll just do this quickly. S&P, S&P at this particular point, um, it's had a really good retracement from the 41,000, 41.86 high down to the uh, 40, 40.50 area low, and now it's bounced. It's at 40, 41.26 down 11. Here again, the nine period moving average is good. The, the MACD is not, the stochastic's weak, but price is the arbiter of the trend. So far, it's holding very well. You want to see by Friday afternoon, maybe Monday sometime, you want to see at least a test of the 41.58 level. Um, that's not too bad. It's only 30 points from here. It's about 300 Dow points. And on the downside, definitely you want to see it hold the 41.20 to 41.100 level over the next couple of days. QQQ. NDX uh, had, had fabulous. It had Meta. It had Microsoft. The year. It had a couple of really good earnings uh, releases that helped. Even if it was just a few stocks, a handful of stocks that led the way up, it did lead the way up. And you went to the inside track repellent zone. And that says by about Tuesday of next week, Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday, give it a whole week. You want to see trading, not just a bounce, but trading in the 325 area. That's only four points away. But that would say you've broken the resistance. The weekly chart is strong as it is. It should continue higher. It's got tremendous support in the 319 to 3 short term, 319 to 318, 317 area. Looking out, I wouldn't be surprised if we start to make a trading band, a much wider trading band between the 327 area and maybe the three. Oh, you could even go down to the 310, retest that 310 low from April. All right, let's do the IWM, the Russell 2000, trying to rally. It's just it's not a good pattern. This is that H pattern that I always talk about where you come down sharp, you make an arch formation. So far, that's held. Uh, in the weekly chart, the daily chart, the same thing. You want to see a good rally going into the 178s by Friday or Monday. Definitely has to hold 167. I will be back in a moment. Dow's down 8, S&P's down 12. I want to be talking about KRE. That is the regionals, S&P Regional Banks. I'll be back. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tom O'Brien. Be back in a few minutes. Currencies, commodities, and